actors are famous or failures, right? Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. And now on to our topic. In full disclosure, I didn't want to do a video this week. It can be exhausting coming up with new content. And with the SAG after strike in full swing, there just didn't seem to be any topics that were poignant other than talking about the strike. Wait, Matt, so what's the deal with this video title? Well, for the muggles of the world, that is non-actors, non-artists, or real people, there can be a lot of misinformed ideas about what happens in this industry. So if you're an actor facing criticism from your non-actor friends about this SAG after strike here in 2023, well then hopefully this video might help shed some light on the topic for them. To the rest of the world, the measure of success for an actor is binary. You either make it, i.e. you're famous, or you don't, i.e. you're a failure. And believe me, even actors fall victim to this type of thinking, and it's abhorrent, really. There are over 150,000 actors that are members of SAG-AFTRA. This is the actors' union that is currently on strike, along with the writers of WGA. Now, there's a lot of numbers and math I could throw around, but let's keep it simple. Let's say for the sake of argument, there are 150,000 actors in the union. There are more, but for the sake of numbers, let's keep it at 150,000. And let's say for the sake of argument that only 10% of those are making a living currently as actors. Now, I arrived at this number because it is a fact that less than 15% of union members make $26,000 a year or more. So 15,000 actors, give or take, are pursuing this art form full-time and making a living wage. Sort of. Because if you're living in New York City or Los Angeles, $26,000 a year is barely a livable wage. I live here in Atlanta, so making that much money it goes a lot farther towards uh, cost of living, cost of food, etc. But I'm getting lost in the weeds here. Here's my first point. Do you know 15,000 celebrities? Can you name them right now? No? Uh, how about a thousand famous actors? No? A hundred? Yeah, you probably could if I gave you enough time. List 100 living famous actors that are still working. Well, even if you can do 100, you still just prove the fallacy of your own beliefs. 15,000 working actors, and you can only name 100. That's less than 1%. So over 99% of the actors that you see every time you turn on the television or watch a movie are not famous, but are successful. They're the actors like me making a career out of this industry year in and year out, but never gracing the cover of a magazine. And those are the actors that are fighting for their livelihoods in this strike. The actors like me who spend over 300 days of an average year not on set. Most years, in fact, I spend less than 10 days on a set. Over the last 15 years, I've amassed over 75 TV and film credits. And yet, still for me, a banner year would be spending 15 days or more on set. That's not exactly job security, is it? Now, I'm not going to pile on all the other negativity and downsides of this profession because believe me everyone and i mean everyone is online right now sharing their war stories and the problem is that i don't think a lot of the actors are realizing is those war stories to the non-actor start to backfire if you load up too much of that negativity because you're seeing a lot of comments now from people saying well if it's so bad then why do you do it why just leave don't act. I mean, that would make more sense, right? Fair point. And if the job we were talking about was flipping burgers or serving lattes, it would stand a reason that you could just quit that job and move into another industry or to another employer. But what the non-artists of the world have trouble understanding is that for us, we feel called to do this. There really isn't anything else we could or would want to do with our lives. And quite frankly, you need us. Want proof? Okay, do you own a TV? You ever turn it on? Do you watch anything on that TV? Or do you just turn to like white noise static? So, so you're saying that you do watch television shows and movies on that television. Okay, so you need us. Or are you married? 
And at your wedding, did you dance with your spouse to a song? And was that song special? I feel like maybe there's a connection, a deeply embedded memory associated with that song. Okay, so you need us. Speaking of music, you ever hear a song come on the radio or you're at a club and you're thinking, this is my jam. Why have you ownership? Why the deep connection to this piece of art? Hmm. Sounds like you need artists. Or, uh, you know, what's on the walls of your house? Oh, it's just all photos of you and your family. They're, they're, oh, wait, there's, there's pictures of, of landscapes or paintings. Huh. Sounds like you need artists. Ever enjoy a novel, a play, an improv show? I think you get the point. However, artists in general get relegated to the bottom of society. Case in point, when a high school or middle school needs to cut a program due to budget constraints, what's the first program to go? The art or music department. But the case I'm trying to make is that we are essential to society. And the folks at the AMPTP, which is the collection of producers that we're striking against right now, Hulu, Amazon, Apple, they don't care at all about these sob stories. They don't seem to understand how essential we are, along with the writers and every other department that shows up on set to their companies and, quite frankly, to the world. It may sound like hyperbole, but do me a favor. Google Glee saved my life, or Game of Thrones saved my life, or insert your favorite show or movie, and see what the results are that pop up. I think you'll be quite shocked. Art can and does save lives but these companies don't seem to think that's worth much. Now, if you wanna learn the ins and outs of exactly what is in the contract negotiations that became sticking points that led to the strike, then I invite you to go visit sagafterstrike.org. I'll put a link in the show notes below. That's the official website that will be updated periodically and it's better than me trying to give you what is current right now when that could be changing day to day. And in the meantime, when you sit down to watch a television show, a movie, or you go to a play or an improv show, or you read a book, or you see a painting, or you listen to a song, maybe take an extra moment to think about the artist or artists that were behind the creation of that piece of art. You know, the folks that are making this world more beautiful, more funny, more bearable to live in. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I guess we'll see you on the picket lines.